Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nak, and we're going to talk about vectors today. So what is a vector? All right, so the vector is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. And what the heck is a magnitude? It's nothing but a length of the arrow, and direction is the arrowhead. So basically, to describe a vector, we're going to have this arrow going on. And the, the starting point is called the initial point, and the end point is called the terminal point. And magnitude will be the length of this vector. Now, usual notation for the vector is that uh, there is a little bar <laughs> on the top of a letter. Uh, anyway, so this is called the, uh, the vector V equals PQ, and then we have a vector notation. And now the vector whose magnitude is zero, that, that could happen. Now that's called a zero vector and it's denoted by zero with a vector notation on top of it. And let's go with the notations again. The magnitude of V is denoted by a double absolute value looking sign and you put a vector V inside of it. Okay, so that stands for the magnitude or the length of the vector. And the vector with a magnitude of one is called a unit vector. Now, here are some properties of the vectors. Uh, it may look obvious to you, but um, well, let's just go over it. So the vector u plus the vector v is same thing as vector v plus vector u. That's called a community property of addition. And u plus quantity v plus w equals u plus v in a quantity and then plus the w. Now that's called the associated property of addition. And any vector, plus the zero vector, please note that this is not a constant zero, this is a vector zero. It's same thing as zero vector plus the uh, vector v, that's gonna equal to v. Now that's called the additive identity property, and v plus the negative v equals to the zero vector. Again, this is not just a good old number zero, it's a vector. Now that's called the additive inverse property. Now the difference, u minus v is defined as u minus v is u plus the negative v. Now let's take a look at how to add vectors geometrically. All right, so what I have here are two vectors, which is vector u and then the vector v. Now, how do you add them together is this. So first, make sure that the both vectors are uh, going in the same direction and make sure that the head of one vector it's gonna touch the tail of the next vector. And again, it has to be going in the, uh, the same direction, which means that this cannot happen. So suppose u is going this way, and then suppose v is going this way. So this cannot happen. You will not be able to add two vectors if they're pointing towards each other. So I'm gonna put no, this cannot happen. All right, so now let's, um, let's add these two vectors. Now what's going to happen is that first you take your first vector, that's great, and then this vector is touching the tail of vector v. So, and then its terminal point is around here somewhere. Now how do you add them geometrically is this. You're going to start from the very bottom of u, and then you're going to draw a straight line towards the terminal point of v. So what I drew here, this black one, is our u plus v. All right, so let's take a look at some of the examples. Okay, so here are two given vectors, u and a v, and we just learned how to add these two, so let's add them. So make sure that first they're pointing in the same direction, so in this case it is. So all you have to do is starting from the very bottom of u, and then you go straight up to the terminal point of v. Thank God for this app. I cannot draw a straight line for the life of me. So anyways, so this line right, or not line, this vector right here is denoted by u plus v. Now, let me copy down the vector v starting from the very bottom, which is the initial point. So what I did here in orange is that I try to draw the same vector v, but it's starting from the initial point of u. So this is also considered as vector v, the same v as we see over here. All right, now notice that they're parallel to each other, as they should be, because they're the same vector. All right, now let me try to draw a u, vector u, if 
by connecting those other two dots. So let me just do it like this. Hold on. All right, so also notice that this is the same exact vector as u. Notice that the new u, this u, and this vector u, they're parallel to each other. So this is another representation for our vector u. So notice that if I wrote it in this way, do you see that I, I could express this terminal point here as v plus u, which is exactly the same length as u plus v. So let me just denote that. So let me just write here as v and then plus u. So therefore, we have u plus v equals to v plus u. Okay, so now let's look at the next one. So here, I already draw the vector u, v, and a w. So let's first add u plus v. Okay, so that's this vector here pointing upward, and then this vector right here. So they're moving in the same direction. So how do I add them to? Remember, starting from the initial point of that first vector, and then you're going to end at the terminal of the second vector. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it like this. All right, so this is our, I don't know if you can see that. So this is our u plus v. All right, so now let's try to add v plus w. So if you want to pause the video and uh, try to draw where the v plus w is going to be, go for it. Okay, so let's look at the starting. For, so here is our v, and then this is our w, right? Now, it's going to start from v, so here's our initial point. And does, is v and w moving in the same direction? Yes, it is. So this is the terminal point of the second vector w, so v plus w is going to be this vector here, going in that direction. Direction matters. So this is our v and then plus d w. Okay, so next, let's try to draw the vector u and then plus v plus w in quantity. All right. So now let's look at the vector here, vectors I should say. So here's our u, and then this is our v plus w. Okay, so if I add these two vectors, first of all, yes, they're moving in the same direction. Here's the initial point from the first vector, touching the tail end of the second vector. So if I wanna go u plus v plus w, we're gonna have to draw a vector going through this way. So this vector right here, oh, where can I write this? So this is u plus v plus w. All right, next, let's try to look at u plus v in a quantity. And then you're going to add w to it. All right, so now let's just look at this uh, vectors real quick. So where's my u plus v? So this is one quantity u plus v. It's going towards the right. And then w is going upward. So this is okay because it's moving on the same direction. So if I, if I want to find out u plus v plus w, so I'm going to start from the initial point of u plus v, which is going to be our, our first vector. And it's going to end at the terminal point of the second vector, which is going to be w. So do you see that we're going to get exactly the same vector as u plus the quantity v plus w? So that's the point that I wanted to make. So let me just write down that this is also u plus v in quantity plus the w. So therefore, what do we got? We have u plus v plus w in a quantity equals to u plus v whole quantity and then add w at the end. They're equal to each other. Okay, next, suppose that our vector u is giving in that direction. Now, where in the heck is my negative u? It's nothing but, it's going to be a parallel to vector u, but it's going in a different direction, this way. So this will be our vector negative u. Okay, so now let's look at something like this. So here's our vector v, and then here is our vector u. We already know how to add these two, so v plus u is going to be this vector here. So this is v plus u. 
which is same thing as u plus v. Okay, next let's try to draw a vector negative v. Negative v vector must be parallel to the vector v, but it has to go in a different direction. So in this case, since vector v is going from left to right, uh, vector negative v has to go from right to left. So that will be, I'm trying to draw something parallel to the given v, but does it look parallel to you? Ah, it's all right. Pretend that's parallel. Okay, so this is our vector negative v. All right, so if we have this, can you uh, try to find this vector? u and then you add negative v. So feel free to pause the video and try to figure it out where that vector is going to be. Alright, so let's first uh, determine where our vector u is. So here's our vector u going upward and then our negative v vector is moving on the same direction but this is its terminal point. So u plus the negative v, that vector is going to be this one right here. So let me just draw the arrow. So this vector right here, I don't know if you can tell, I'm sorry, this is getting kind of crowded, huh? So this is same thing as u plus the negative v. And just heck of it, let me try to write another vector u just to complete the picture. So pretend that this line right here is parallel to our given vector u on the right, but it does not look parallel, but please convince yourself that this is parallel. So this is our u. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. So here's our vector v plus u, right? And then negative v is going in the same direction, right? So if I have v plus u plus the negative v, is not just the our vector u. So let me just write down what we just said. So our, uh, where can I write this? I'll just write it right here. v plus u, and then if I add negative v to this, you're just gonna get our vector u back, which makes sense. Okay, example time. So let's call this one example one, given the vectors u, v, and a w. So I've already drawn the picture of u, v, and a w. They're, they're, I'm trying to draw this in the same um, setting, like same vectors. Okay, so let's first go with find u plus v, and part b, find v minus w. And the last one, let's compute, not compute, let's find the vector 2u minus 3v, plus the w. Okay, so let's uh, do u plus v right here. All right, so vector u is here, right? And then vector v is here. So let me, if I wanna go u plus v, I should be able to draw vector u, the same parallel u over here, pointing uh, towards downward. Okay, so I'm not very good at this. Um, let me try to make it parallel to our given u here. Okay, does this look like uh, parallel to our given u? Oh well, I'm just gonna go with it. So let me pretend this is our vector u. Ah, not bad, That's, that looks totally parallel. All right, so this is our vector u. So our u plus v, u plus v, is gonna equal to this vector, uh, over here, I'm about to draw it. There you go. Oh, sorry, it's going in this direction. So this is our vector u and then plus v. All right, now let's look at part v. v minus w. All right, so given these three vectors, I'm just gonna focus on v and a vector w. So I already made a dot to make sure that they are kind of parallel to each other, the terminal point. So if I go this way, oops, pretend that's straight. <laughs> All right, so pretend that this is parallel to our vector w. So this, is, this will be our w. Now, where is our negative w? Because we need to compute v minus w. So remember, if w is going this way, that means the negative w is gonna point the opposite way. 
so here I am so not good at this ah let me just go okay do, does it look the same length ah oh well I'm gonna pretend that that's the same length and let me just jot, jot this point down as a terminal point so this is our vector negative w oops negative w all right so now I think we can compute v minus w which is same thing as v plus the negative w so here is our v and then our negative w is over here it's going in the same direction so guess what v minus w is this vector here let me just draw this out oops all right so here it is so this vector is our v uh, plus negative w or minus w is just okay all right so now let's look at part c so we got 2u minus 3v plus w all righty so we got a lot of stuff going on here so let's first determine where that 2 times vector u is going to be all right so vector 2u means that you're going to stretch your u twice so here let me just try to draw this straight i don't know if i can do this i can do this i can do this all right so does it look twice as long of you i think that looks good all right so let me just jot this down so this whole vector here is going to be our 2u or actually the terminal point is right here so that's 2u okay so now we're gonna have to go minus 3v okay so guess what we need to do so here is our vector v right so we're gonna have to go negative 3v so first of all we have to move towards the left and the length is going to be three times as long as our v so let's see if i can do this okay so does that look three times as long as our v uh, i'm just going to go with it so pretend that's three uh, negative 3v in fact so let me just draw a straight line through all right so this vector here is our negative 3 oops negative 3v okay next i think we can go to you uh, minus the 3v so here is our 2u and this is our negative 3v so to 2u to plus the negative 3v we're gonna have a vector going this way all right so let me draw the vector okay so here we go oh my gosh that's supposed to be an arrow okay so this is our vector 2u and then minus 3v okay so what else do we need we got 2u minus 3v vector going on now i need to add w to this okay so let me try to draw from this point as an initial point and then let me try to draw the same vector w going upward oh my goodness all right does that look like parallel to uh w vector w okay so let me just do this okay so pretend oh that's not so bad that's parallel to w right so this is our vector w so negative 2u minus 3v which is right here and then plus w so it looks like this is the vector that we're looking for so i'm just going to label this as 2u minus 3v plus w okay now what we're going to do is we're going to be multiplying vectors by numbers and geometrically so let c be a scalar v a vector if c is positive then constant times vector v is the vector with c times the magnitude of v whose direction is the same as v now if c is negative cv is the vector with c times the magnitude of v whose direction is the opposite of v now if uh, the scalar is zero or the vector is zero 
then scalar times the vector is a zero vector. Again, this is not a numerical value zero. You're gonna get a vector zero back. Okay, so here are the properties. Uh, zero, so this is the scalar zero. This is the numerical value zero times the vector v is gonna give us a vector, zero vector back. Okay, and then this is the numerical value one times vector v is v itself. And negative one v is same thing as negative v. And c plus d, so these are the constant, times vector v is cv plus the dv. So you can distribute the vectors. Now, constant times the quantity u plus v is cu plus cv, so the constant distributes to both vectors. And constant times uh, another constant times v, you can just combine the scalars together and multiply that by our vector v. Next is the properties of the magnitude of v. Now, magnitude is the length, right? So magnitude better be greater or equal to zero. Now the, uh, the magnitude of negative v is the same thing as the magnitude of v because remember, uh, negative v, it has the same length but it's going in the different direct, opposite direction of v. So that magnitude should be the same. Now, uh, the norm of v is zero if and only if v is a zero vector. Now the constant times v, magnitude of constant times v is you take the absolute of the constant multiply by the magnitude of v. Okay, so now let's take a look at the definition. Now, we have another way to uh, express our vector in a different notation. So an algebraic vector v is represented by v equals this little bracket a comma b, where a's and b's are real numbers and we call that the components of v. Okay. So now let's look at the next theorem. Sorry, I already um, wrote this out just to save us some time. So it says that suppose that V is a vector with initial point P1 and the terminal point P2. Now, if our vector V is the, uh, the vector that's connecting P1 and P2, then our vector V is given by X2 minus the X1 comma Y2 minus the Y1. Now, please note that in this case, P1 does not necessarily have to be at the origin. So the P1 can be 5 comma 2 or something like that. All right. So now let's look at some examples. So it says find the position vector V, which is P1, P2. If P1 is negative 2 comma 3 and P2 is 3 comma 5. So let's, let me just first jot down negative 2 comma 3. Is that right here? So negative two comma three, and then uh, P2 is 3.5, three, and then one, two, three, four, five, is that right? One, two, three, four, five, yeah. So this is three comma five. So this is our P2, and this is our P1. So the vector P1, P2 is gonna be this vector here. So this is P1, P2, and I'm gonna denote that by a vector. Okay, so now let's find the position vector. All right, so the position vector, we just follow the formula that we just learned. So let me just write that out, position vector. So let's denote that guy by V. How do you find that? Is X2 minus X1, that's the X coordinate. Oops, and then Y2 minus the Y1, that's gonna be our Y coordinate. So it looks like our vector V or the position vector is going to be x2, which is 3, minus minus 2, comma, 5 minus 3. So our v is going to be 5, comma, 2. Um, maybe I should denote our v as a, a little vector notation, so it's just so that we'll get used to it. So let me just um, rewrite this in terms of a little vector notation that we just learned. So I'm just going to rewrite this as this. Actually, same thing as ordered pair. If you want it to be an ordered pair, that's fine. But so 5 comma 2 is going to be, where is that? 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 comma 2. All right. So it better be parallel to uh, our P1, P2. So let me just um, connect those two dots, make a vector out of it. So the position vector is this vector here. Okay, so I'm going to denote that guy by V. 
Okay, so our next topic is alternative representation of a vector. All right, so ready? So let I vector be the unit vector. Remember the unit vector is magnitude is one, whose direction is the positive x-axis. All right, and then our vector j is the unit vector whose direction is the positive y-axis. So basically, if you graph it out, if you're a more visual person, our vector i is going to be starting from 0 and then ending at 1, 0. And then our j is going to end up at 0, 1. So then do you agree that if I want to write vector v in terms of a, v, isn't that same thing as a times 1, 0? So this will just give us uh, just the a back. Right? And then here, plus v times the vector 0, 1. So this will just give us a b back. But this is our a plus b. But this guy right here is our vector i. And this guy right here is going to be our vector j. So also, I can rewrite our vector a, b as a times the i vector plus v times the j vector. And here comes more properties. Ready? Okay, so let V V A one I plus the B one J W equals A two I plus the B two J and C is a scalar in this case. Okay, so V plus W is you just combine the coefficient on I's together, all right, and then you combine the coefficient on the B's together. So it's another word, it's you're gonna form a vector A one plus A two, comma V one plus B two. Now, V minus W, same idea. You're going to go A, A1 minus A2 times the I plus the B1 minus the B2 times the J. So in vector notation, you're going to have A1 minus A2 comma B1 minus B2. Don't worry, we're going to do some examples in a minute. And constant times the vector V is C times D. Remember, vector V is denoted by a1i plus the b1j. So if I multiply here by c to this whole thing, do you see that the c is going to distribute to make it into ca1 times the i plus cb1 times the j. So that's denoted by ca comma cb1. ca1 comma cb1. Sorry about that. Okay, now let's go with the norm of v. Now norm of v is nothing going to be square root of a1 squared, right? a1 squared and then plus the b1 squared. All right, example time. So example three, let v be negative 5i plus 3j. w is 2i plus the 4j. So let's first go with, let's find v plus w. Okay, so let's just write it out. So our v is negative 5i plus 3j and then plus our w is 2i, and then plus 4j, right? So now all we have to do is uh, combine the coefficient on the i's, and then combine the coefficient on j's. So here you're gonna have negative five, and then plus two times the i, plus three plus four times the j. So maybe I should write down the vector notation here, sorry about that. All right, so what do we get? We're gonna get, uh, what is that? Negative three comma seven. So you know we can. Let's just let me just write it first in um, I J notation. So let me just erase this. Okay. So I can rewrite this as negative three I, and then plus the seven J, right? But if I want to express this in a vector notation, let me just first box this because this is going to be our answer for that. Okay, now if I want to uh, express this in using the vector notation, I, to me that's a lot simpler for me in my, in my eyes, but so our V can be uh, represented by bracket negative 5 comma 3, that's our V, and then plus our W can be represented by 2 comma 4, right? So when you add them together, this is same thing as negative 3 comma 7, which is same meaning as negative 3i plus the 7j. Okay, so you can also rewrite, rewrite it in this way if you like. 
Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. So let's call this one part B. Let's go with 2V and then minus the 3W. All right, so if I do this step by step, you're going to have 2 times V, which is negative 5I plus the 3J. And then minus the 3 times W, which is 2I. I forgot to put a vector notation over here. And then uh, plus 4J. Okay, so now let's just keep simplifying. So this is the same thing as negative 10i plus 6j. And then this one, same thing as plus negative 6i and then minus the 12j. Okay, so now let's combine the constant terms for i, coefficient on the i together. So here you're going to have negative 10 and then minus 6 times the i, and then plus 6 minus the 12 times our vector j. So this is the same thing as negative 16i, and then uh, what is that? Minus 6j. Okay, so this is going to be the answer. Oops. All right. So now if I want to write this in, um, in terms of a vector notation, I could also do it this way. So I can go uh, 2v minus 3w. So this is the same thing as 2 times v, which is negative 5 comma 3. And then minus 3 times the w is 2 comma 4. Right, so that's the same thing as negative 10 comma 6. And then plus the negative 6 comma negative 12. So this is same thing as negative 16 and then comma and then negative 6. I, I like this notation way better, but um, you can do whichever notation. You can use whichever notation that you like. As long as you know that, you know, uh, let me see, uh, negative 16 comma negative 6, this means that this is same thing as negative 16i minus the 6j. Anyways, let's look at the next one. Let's call this one C, A, B, C, right? Okay, C. Let's compute the magnitude of V. Okay, so let me just spell everything out. So this is the magnitude of V is negative 5 comma 3. Right, so that's same thing as the square root of negative 5 squared and then plus the 3 squared. So that's same thing as 25 plus 9. Is that right? Yeah. So that's same thing as the square root of 34. So that, that, that's the length of the vector. So let me box that. How are you guys doing up to here? Hopefully you're kind of getting hang of it. And I used to think this is such a like a tedious notation here and there, you know. But once you get used to it, you'll be okay. All right. So now let's look at the next one. Here is another theorem. It says that uh, for any non-zero vector v, u vector u equals v divided by the magnitude of v is going to become a unit vector that has the same direction as v. Okay, so let's take a look at this example, example four. Find the unit vector in the same direction as v equals negative 5i plus 3j. Okay, so let's, uh, again, let's make ourselves a note. So note that unit vector going in the same direction as v is uh, given by v divided by the magnitude of v. Okay, so keep that in mind. So our u, this is what we we're looking for, the unit vector. So I'm going to use the vector notation here. Negative 5 comma 3 divided by the norm of v is negative 5 squared and then plus the 3 squared. So this is same thing as negative 5 comma 3. And then we just computed this guy's square root of 34, but let's not skip any steps. So this is negative 5 comma 3 and then the square root of 34. Okay, so that's same thing as negative 5 over the square root of 34 and then 3 over the square root of 34. Rationalize the denominator. So then we're going to get 
negative 5 square root of 34 over the 34, comma, 3 root 34 divided by 34. So let me just box that for the answer. Now, this, is, uh, this should be our unit vector, right? So which means that if I compute the norm of, vec uh, norm of this vector here, that length should be 1. Okay, now we're going to get into some applications of vectors. So, but first, let's go with how to find the vector from its direction and magnitude. So, let me just first go with the velocity vector. So, velocity vector is a vector represent the speed and the direction of an object. And the force vector is a vector represent the direction and the amount of force acting on an object. Okay, so please note that given the magnitude of V and the directed angle theta, where theta is between 0 and 2 pi, 2 pi excluded, between V and the vector I. Remember vector I was 1 comma 0, if you forgot. Right, and then let me just go over here. Our U equals to V divided by magnitude of V. Now if I solve for V by multiplying both sides by the magnitude of V, we're going to have V equals magnitude of V times U. Alright, so here you can uh, represent the V as uh, magnitude of V times the vector cosine theta sine theta. You're like, say what? Right, so what I did was I drew your picture here. So this is our uh, vector I. And this is our vector j, right? And I'm just going to draw a vector u, and this is its terminal point. Now, remember, um, if I call this angle theta, I can compute uh, this value here by cosine of theta as an x coordinate, and then sine of theta as a y coordinate. That's exactly what this is telling you. So, how do I compute the vector v? First, you take the norm of v. Right, and then pretend that uh, since u must be a uh, what is it unit vector, so you, the length has to be one. So notice that this ordered pair is one zero, and then zero one. So this length right here should be just one. Okay, so now going back, so our vector v can be represented by uh, magnitude of v times d cosine theta and sine theta. So this is nothing but our vector u. All right, so let's look at an example. So I typed it out here. Okay, a ball is thrown with an initial speed of 15 miles per hour in a direction that makes an angle of 60 degrees with the positive x-axis. Express the velocity vector v in terms of i and j. What's the initial speed in the horizontal direction? And what is the initial speed in the, that should be in the, vertical direction. Okay, to understand this better, I always like to draw the picture. So let me just draw the picture of this situation. Okay, so let's just read it through. So let me just read it again. So it says that the ball is thrown with an initial speed of 15 miles per hour, right, in a direction that makes an angle of 60 degrees. With the positive x-axis. Oh my goodness. All right, so let me just draw that situation out. So uh, 60 degrees, right? Pi over 3. So does this look okay? Okay, so let me just draw this as a vector. And then the initial speed is 15 miles per hour. So I'm just going to denote this vector as 15. And its terminal point, remember, this can be represented by cosine of theta and then sine of theta. All right, and then our theta is right here, which is 60 degrees. If you like radian measure better than degrees like me, you just write that, write that as pi over 3. Okay, so now let's uh, figure out what the question is asking, right? So it says express the velocity vector v in terms of i and j and it says that what is the initial speed in the horizontal direction 
and then what is the initial speed in the vertical direction. So first of all, I apologize, I forgot to write this as, uh, sorry, this vector is our V and 15 is nothing but the magnitude of V. Now we want to find the initial speed in the horizontal direction and the vertical direction, right? So uh, initial speed in the horizontal direction would be along the x-axis and what would be the vertical uh, direction. So that will be the y-axis, right? So let me draw that out. So what the question's asking is that when I throw a ball at the initial speed of 50 miles per hour this way, all right, I guess it's going in the 60 degree direction. Notice that there should be a speed going in the horizontal direction and also in the vertical direction, right? So the question is, how fast is it going in each direction? Now the previous uh, statement says that I can express our V in terms of norm V times the, our unit vector U which is same thing as norm, sorry, I use, always use the word norm instead of magnitude, they mean the same thing. So the magnitude of V and then U can be represented by cosine of theta and then also the sine of theta. So let's just use this um, formula to compute what's going on. So in other words, right, you can think of it in this way. So this is the length 15, right, which is the, uh, the magnitude is 15. So basically, if you want to rephrase the, uh, the question, what is the length of this leg and what it would be the length of this leg that makes this triangle uh, to make sense by using the Pythagorean identity. But anyway, so let me just um, write this out. So our V is magnitude of V and then cosine and then sine. Okay, so our magnitude of V is 15. And we're gonna multiply by cosine of theta, which is cosine of pi over three, and then sine of pi over three. All right, so which is same thing as 15 times what's cosine of uh, pi over three, one half, comma, and then uh, sine of pi over three is root three over two, Right, so I think they want you to write this in the velocity vectors in terms of i and j. Okay, so let me just multiply this in. So 15 over 2 and 15, oops, root 3 over 2. Okay, so this is in vector form, but if they want to uh, want you to express it in terms of i and j, so this is same thing as 15 over 2i vector, and then plus the 15 root 3 over 2 and then j. Okay, I'm gonna box both of them because I like them both. All right, so basically what you just discovered is this. Uh, let me just type this in the calculator and see the get the approximate value. But the first one is 7.5, isn't it? So let me just um, write this as 7.5. And then 15 root 3 divided by 2. What is that approximately? Like 13-ish, I think. Okay, so that's the approximated uh, value of it. So basically what the, this is telling you is that the initial speed in the horizontal direction is gonna be 7.5 miles per hour, while a ball's throw in an angle of 60 degrees at the initial speed of 50 miles per hour. So let me, I'll just spell it out. So the initial speed in the horizontal direction Uh, is approximately, I should say, um, this one's exactly, huh? 15 over two, which is 7.5 miles per hour. And the initial speed uh, 
in the vertical direction is approximately, now let me just write down the exact value, approximately 13 miles per hour. All right, so let me just box that. So what we just discovered is this, this vector here in terms of I is 7.5. And then our vertical vector here, it's going to be 13J. So I could just write it as 7.5I and then 13 times the J. All right, so this is, let me see, approximately though, so this is gonna be zero comma 13, and then this point's gonna be 7.5 comma zero. All right, so notice that the 13 J is same thing as the height of this, uh, pretend that's a right triangle, the right triangle. So if you go 7.5 squared, plus 13, uh, 13 squared, and then taking a square root of it, you should get approximately 15 back. Anyways, I'm gonna stop right here, so if you have any questions at all, please let me know. Oh, and those of you who's moving on to uh, calculus, you'll see vectors again in third semester calculus and also in linear algebra. And those of you who's going to be taking physics, I'm pretty sure that you're going to see vectors again. Anyways, I just wanted to let you know that. So good job today.